Hello students, welcome to MEC 1321, Engineering Statics. Today we're going to go over the material for Chapter 3, which is Chapter 3, Section 3.1 uh, to 3.4. Uh, this chapter is deceptively short, and so we're going to be able to run through all this material very quickly. However, the concepts uh, and theory that is shown and demonstrated in this chapter is very important. Uh, chapter 3 is titled Equilibrium of a Particle. Um, in this chapter, we're going to show the basic concept of how to create a free body diagram and show how to solve particle equilibrium problems using the equations of equilibrium. So let's go ahead and get, and get started with section 3.1, which is conditions for the equilibrium of a particle. A particle is said to be at equilibrium if it, if, if it remains at rest or if it has a constant applied velocity. Uh, so this means an object sitting on a desk or an object, uh, say an object in space, which is given a velocity uh, and, and is allowed to just uh, uh, to have that constant velocity not change due to any friction or any uh, type of interaction with this environment. Uh, in general, uh, with statics in this class, we're going to be dealing with problems that are at rest, meaning static objects. Um, to maintain equilibrium, it is necessary to satisfy Newton's first law of motion, and this requires that the resultant force acting on a particle equal to zero. So let's look at the, the diagram or the example that we have here. Say we have a particle, and it is subject to three different force vectors. And then we assume that this particle has a constant velocity. Well, in order for it to maintain equilibrium, the sum of these force vectors which are applied to the body must equal to zero. Uh, and thus, we have our e equation of equilibrium. The sum of the force vectors is equal to zero. Uh, and that sum is force vector 1 plus 2 plus 3. Uh, now, of course, we can take this uh, this force vector, this sum of force vectors, and we can separate it into the orientations. So we can separate it into the sum of the forces in the x direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction, and the sum of the forces in the z direction. And the sum of those forces, the magnitude of those forces in each orientation must also be zero. So let's go ahead and go into a free body diagram, uh, which is section 3.2. In order to apply equilibrium, we must first identify the knowns and unknowns that are acting on a particle. This can be done by isolating the particle from its surroundings, meaning freeing the particle, freeing the body from its surrounding. This is called making a free body diagram. A classic example is a hanging weight. So say we have a weight, we're hanging it by a cord to the roof. That weight, well, that weight, it has a mass, and that mass times gravity equals to its weight. Uh, now, in order to create the free body diagram, uh, first, we take the particle of interest, which is the mass, uh, and we free it from any attachments. And then we draw uh, uh, vectors, which signify the uh, types of forces, or the direction of the forces that are applied to it. So we have a force that's going downward and a force going upward. And then next, we label and describe those forces, as well as the orientations that they, that they have. So we know that uh, the downward force is the weight, which is equal to mass times gravity. And the upward force we could describe as the tension in the cable uh, that is holding the, the mass. Uh, and that's, in general, how we create a free body diagram. Now let's go into some examples of uh, 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 different types of uh, systems or, or different types of components which could be used or, or, or in a free body diagram system. One of the, the ones that you'll see often, you'll see it often in this class, you'll also see it often in dynamics classes and in general physics courses, is a spring. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this diagram. Say we have a mass which is suspended by a spring and attached to the roof. Uh, if we look at the diagram, um, we see that it has a length L which we can call the deformed length or the stretched length. Uh, it has a, a length L0, which we can call the undeformed length, meaning if the spring was not stretched. 
And then it has this value S, which is called the displacement, which is the value of how much the spring has stretched due to uh, the weight or the, the, the weight that's attached to it. Well, what we can do is we can take this spring, take this diagram, and, uh, and create a free body diagram of it, where we isolate the mass, we draw the arrows, which indicate the uh, forces that are going through that mass, and then we define the values of those, of those um, forces. The downward force we can call weight, which is equal to the mass times the gravity, and the upward force we'll call F, well, let's call it, uh, let's actually change that and call it FS, and that is our spring force. Now, the spring force is something uh, that we can calculate. The spring force is described as, the, is equal to the stiffness of the spring times the amount of stretch that has developed in that spring, uh, where K is equal to the stiffness, S is the amount of stretch or the displacement of the spring, and that is equal to the deformed length minus the undeformed length uh, of, the, of the body. So now that we've identified this spring force equation, um, let's go ahead and apply our equations of equilibrium. Uh, in this case, we, we have all the forces in the y direction, so we can go ahead and describe this problem uh, uh, the first step we want to, the first thing we want to do is define. We're doing this some of the forces in the y direction. What is going to be our positive orientation? We will assume that upward, an upward arrow, is the positive orientation. So if we're going upwards, it's a positive force. Uh, so once we've done that, we can look at our free body diagram, and we can see that uh, it is the spring force minus the mass times gravity is equal to zero and we've created our equation of equilibrium. We can also go in and uh, simply, you know, refine this even more. So we can replace the value of the spring force with the, uh, uh, the stiffness times the displacement. And this is a very useful feature because it, it allows us to calculate how much displacement that mass would cause in the spring or how much stretch would, would be caused due to the spring. Um, and this is just one of the types of objects which we will use in our free body diagrams. Another type of object which we'll use are cables and pulleys. Uh, in this book, cables are assumed to have negligible weight. So the cables themselves do not contribute to uh, the free body diagram. Um, what they do, however, do is that they carry tension. And they only carry tension. Um, if you were to take a cable and try to compress it, it wouldn't compress very well. So cables only carry tension. So let's go ahead and look at the example that we have here. Uh, in this example, we have a pulley, and along that pulley is a cable, and at the end of that cable is attached some mass. Uh, and there is a force that is applied to maintain the equilibrium of that mass in, in, in the cable pulley system. Uh, what we can do is we can create free body diagrams. Now in the case of this cable and pulley system, we need to uh, separate this problem into two free body diagrams in order to truly solve it. What we can do is we can take that pulley, the, the position of the pulley, uh, and, separate it, and separate the problem about that pulley. So we can take this portion, or this side of the pulley, and from it we'll find uh, a, we have this cable that is in tension. If there is a tension that is applied uh, in one direction, there must be an also uh, uh, equal and opposite force that is maintained within that free body diagram. So free body diagram one will be the cable that's at the angle theta, and there's tension on one side and there's tension on the other side of the cable. Uh, and, of course, that's very easy for us to know that that will be in equilibrium. Uh, the next thing we can do is we can do the other side of the problem here, where we can take this mass, we can turn it into uh, a, a point mass, we can apply the arrows of the force that should be going to it, and then we can describe those forces. 
The downward force we can describe as the weight, which is equal to the mass times the gravity. And the upward force is the tension that is in that cable, which is also a value of t. And, and from this, we can determine the information about both sides of the pulley system. Now let's go into a procedure for drawing a free body diagram. In order to draw a free body diagram, there are three basic steps, uh, as I've described already. The first step is to draw the outline of the shape. So, you know, draw the object of interest. Uh, so if you're outside, you're, say you're looking at a lamppost, you draw an idealized version of that lamppost. Uh, in general, in this class, you'll be given a basic outline of the shape of the problem of interest. The next step is to take that body and idealize it, meaning replace the object that has mass and volume with a particle. Uh, in this case, we're going to replace the mass, which is the box. So there's a, there's a box that is sitting on a table. We're going to replace that box uh, with a particle. And then we want to, the second step is to show the forces that are acting on that, on that particle. So there's a downward force and there's an upward force, where the downward force is the, the weight of the box and the upward force is the normal force that, that is exerted by the table on the box to keep the box from moving. So the third step is identify each force. So we can actually put the values or, or put the information we know about each force. So the weight we know is equal to mass times gravity and the normal force we know is going upwards and we can just denote it as an N. Um, now the examples that I've shown, this example here and the previous examples are very simple. Uh, but as we go through the book, you'll find more and more complex uh, free body diagrams will, be, will need to be developed. It's very important that, uh, the, that you take the time to develop a good free body diagram before you start solving a problem. It's very easy to make a mistake and miss an arrow or miss the angle, the angular information about a force uh, or something of that nature and it'll cause you to completely get your solution wrong. So it's important to take your time, draw an excellent free body diagram, and then also identify the knowns and unknowns so that you can more successfully solve a problem. The next step is, well the next section is coplanar force systems. So if a particle is subject to a system of force that maintains equilibrium, then the sum of the components of, of that uh, force on any axis will be zero. So say we have, uh, as depicted in this diagram, a particle that is subject to uh, numerous force vectors, force vector one, two, three, and four. Um, in order for there to be equilibrium, we know that the sum of the force vectors is equal to zero. Well, we know that we can take those force vectors and then divide them into the components on each axis. So the sum of the forces in the x, the sum of the forces in the y, the sum of the forces in the z. On each of these axes, the sum must be zero. And so we end up with these equations, these scalar equations, uh, equations of equilibrium, which is the sum of the forces in the x under, on the x direction is equal to zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Uh, now, something to remember, the sense of direction of the force components must be accounted for by using algebraic signs of plus and minus. So as we solve these problems, we must identify what will we assume our positive axis is, and then we must apply negative signs to the force components that are in the negative direction. Example, say we have some particle and it has a force uh, towards the right called T and a force towards the left called N. If we were to, and it's on the x-axis. First, we assume what is our positive direction. We assume to, towards the right is our positive x-direction. And then we can create our e equation of equilibrium, which will show T minus N is equal to zero. It's important to include the sense of direction of the force components in order to get an accurate solution. Now let's look at another example, a very quick example. Say we have some mass which is attached uh, by a pulley system to two cables. Uh, we can, let's uh, attempt to uh, write the equations of equilibrium 
for this uh, uh, mass system. So the first thing we do is we want to idealize this system. So what we can do is we can take the pulley uh, and, and replace the mass and the other components with the forces that go through that pulley. Um, we know there's a downward force and we know there are two forces that are going through the cables. We can describe the downward force as the weight of the mass and we can describe the two upward forces as, as the tension in cable A and the tension in cable B. Uh, and let's assume that both of these cables have the same angle theta with respect to the x-axis. Now that we've created and crafted our free body diagram, let's go ahead and apply the equations of equilibrium. So uh, let's say for in the y direction that uh, force y is upwards positive from that we can uh, start writing our equation of equilibrium where we can say that tension a time uh, well t a times sine of theta plus t b times sine of theta is equal to the weight um, and of course this uh, is also described can also be written as minus the weight equal to zero uh, so you see that we're still carrying the direction of the weight. Um, now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the sum of the forces in the x direction. Let's assume towards the right is positive. Then we'll have TB times cosine of theta minus TA times cosine of theta is equal to zero. See how we carry that negative direction from tension A because it's going in the negative x direction. Uh, now let's move on to 3D force systems. As previously stated, uh, the, sum of the, fo the sum of force vectors for, for uh, an object to have equilibrium, the sum of the force vectors must be equal to zero. In 3D, when we have 3D problems, uh, then we just add an additional equilibrium equation, which is the sum of the forces in the Z direction are equal to zero. So our equilibrium becomes sum of the forces X equal to zero, sum of the forces Y equal to zero, sum of the forces Z equal to zero. And so we can apply this same uh, issues of equilibrium in 2D as well as in 3D. Uh, so that pretty much covers the material for chapter 3. Uh, please read chapter 3, the, the various sections from the book. Uh, it's important that you cover it because there may be some details that are not included in this video. Um, and be prepared for a quiz and homework assignments and exercises in class. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I'm Dr. Stewart.